Look at the data on mortgage applications that we got yesterday. The purchase index was down 8%, and that's following a 3% decline the week before. And the refi index was down 9%, following an 8% decline the week before. Mortgages and refinances are plunging. And this has major implications for the economy. First of all, Wells Fargo just announced major layoffs in its home lending business. Why? Well, because people aren't able to do any refis. So they don't need all these mortgage agents if people can't refinance their mortgages. Because where are mortgage rates? Five and a half percent, something like that. The mortgage interest rate is now so high in relation to where it's been that there's nobody who can now refinance their mortgage into a lower rate because everybody's got a better rate than what they can get now. And that refi lifeline has been a major lifeline for the economy because it's given households a source of income because you only refinance your mortgage if the result is a lower payment. And if homeowners are able to lower their payments through a mortgage refi, then they have extra money to spend because they're not spending it on their mortgage. They have more money to go shopping or whatever. And that additional spending goes into GDP. It also helps employment in the industries that are the beneficiaries of that spending. So this has been helping a bubble economy, an economy based on consumer spending. If consumer incomes are freed up from having to make mortgage payments, they have more money to buy other things. Well, Households can't do that anymore. Whatever your mortgage is, you're stuck. You're not going to be able to reduce it. And in fact, for a lot of people, their mortgages are going to be going up because you still have a lot of adjustable rate mortgages out there. I'm not sure the exact percent, maybe something like 15, 20% of the mortgages are adjustable. And they're not necessarily adjustable every year. A lot of people took out five-year fix where after five years it adjusts. Well, there are a lot of people that did that five years ago. And now they're getting up to their adjustment period and their rate is going to adjust way up and now they're going to have to start spending more money making their mortgage payments which means now they have less money to buy food less money to buy gas of course food and gas cost even more so chances are they're going to have to cut back on other discretionary items which is why a lot of these consumer discretionary stocks have been having so much trouble but we already have this anecdotal evidence of a weaker economy even more news today weakness in manufacturing the kansas city fed manufacturing index was supposed to come out at 39 that was going to be an improvement over 37 in march instead the april number was just 25 which was way below the consensus range which went from 35 to 40 so there's ample evidence that the economy is much weaker than everybody thought and that is especially true when you look at the GDP number that confirms this. Now, of course, one of the biggest factors driving the GDP down was America's record trade deficit. We actually got the merchandise trade deficit. Now they call it the goods deficit. We got the advance estimate for March. So this was the final month of the third quarter. And this definitely weighed on the number. The expectation was for a deficit of $105 billion, And that would have been an improvement on the record $106.6 billion that was reported for February. Now, that number was actually revised slightly lower, so it wasn't 106.6, as we were originally told. It was only 106.3, which was still a record based on the deficit of the past. Now, remember, this is just goods. This doesn't include our surplus in services that reduces the overall deficit, but this is the big deal. This is the manufactured stuff. Remember, when Donald Trump ran for office to make America great again, it was because of our merchandise trade deficit. It was manufacturing. He campaigned to make America great again by rebuilding our industrial base, our manufacturing, because we were losing on trade because of these big trade deficits. Well, the March number, not only did it not contract, the way the experts expected, but it skyrocketed to $125.3 billion, shattering the old record miles above the consensus range, which went from a low of $103.7 billion to a high of $106.6 billion. This is a horrific number. I mean, nobody has ever seen anything like this number. I mean, the only thing more amazing than this number is the market reaction, because The dollar went up. 
I mean, once upon a time, a number like this, not like we've ever seen a number like this, the dollar would be killed. Instead, the dollar went up. Gold got hammered on this news. Nothing that should have happened did happen. The markets are still completely clueless. Normally, the currency of a nation with such a horrific trade deficit, its currency would be punished because that's the way to get rid of the deficit. The currency crashes and now you can't afford all the imports anymore. And now your exports get a lot cheaper to foreigners and it helps bring your trade back into balance. But America is not being disciplined the way a normal country would because we have the reserve currency. You see, how did we pay to import $125.3 billion worth of stuff? We paid for it with dollars. We imported stuff and we exported dollars. See, dollars are America's greatest export, except they're worthless. We just print them. We create them out of thin air. They have no value. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race you're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1,000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You know, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave. You forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address, and I see you on the other side. Your Marco Stan.